In this section we will review the ETL process, extract, transform and loading of data into a data warehouse. For the most part of working as a business analyst, you are likely to be utilising tables that have already been created by a team of database administrators from various disparate source systems. A disparate source system implies that the systems are not related to each other. You will also hear the term ETL commonly referenced as the batch. In context, you may have read emails relating to the daily, weekly and monthly ETL batch status, which would provide a business status update on how batch jobs ran over the weekend or at the end of month. Batch in this case implies that there are a number of concurrent parallel ETL scheduled jobs which are processing the source system data. Let's walk through a typical ETL process and see how each part relates and potential issues we can face along the way. In the first swim lane, entitled Source Systems, our business has data that they capture from three disparate, non-related sources. The first step in our ETL process will be to connect to these source systems to capture any new data and typically such data captures will be happening on a daily basis and in some cases even on an hourly basis depending on your data needs. In our process we are connecting first to a customer support phone and email system followed by a connection to a third party data vendor who we are capturing additional customer and merchant information from and finally our web application which hosts for example our e-commerce website. The first step will be to connect to and extract the data from each system and it may be the case that to extract the data from each of these systems we will utilise different software tools. For example when connecting to our customer support system which is hosted internally on our servers and is also running on a MySQL database similar to our data warehouse we're able to connect with these to the database and extract required information to be brought into our data warehouse. You might ask then, why do we want to extract data from a database to be brought into another database, such as our data warehouse? If they are both running on MySQL, why not just connect directly? Typically the answer is due to security, and database administrators will limit user access to source systems by having them go through a data warehouse. In all the years I've been working as a business analyst, there have only been a few cases where I would have required direct access to a source system, and in the majority of cases I will access company data from a single data warehouse that is managed and maintained by a team of database administrators. Such cases where I've had to have direct access to a source system is where I would have been performing a data migration into our data warehouse. And as a subject matter expert, I would have also been acting as a database administrator with higher privileges than a standard business analyst. For administration purposes, it makes sense for a team of database administrators to only have to manage database user accounts from a single source. Capturing data from source systems will then only require having to set up one or two users with administration privileges to access such source systems. Database administrators who are looking to access these systems can do so securely, knowing that there is only one or two users that can access such systems, which limits the number of vulnerabilities on such systems that would be vital for a business. For example, we wouldn't want a business analyst to be able to directly access a payment system, which could leave our payment system open to attacks from hackers if they manage to infiltrate our business analyst's workstation. Such systems would also have a number of authentication methods put in place such as first having to dial in to a secure VPN, virtual private network, provide a one-time token password, critical systems which can be easily monitored by our database administrators and security team to ensure that only a few limited accounts are accessing such delicate systems. Next our ETL is connecting to a third-party data vendor who is provided access to their system by means of an API, Application Programming Interface. For this we have written a number of scripts in Python to negotiate with the third party data. For example, we have functionality that allows us to log in with secure details and generate a valid token for access. We also need to take into account how many records we can request from the system. 
so as not to overpower the system, which could be considered as a DDoS attack or denial of service, which implies we have bombarded the system with too many requests that the system starts failing to process our requests and anybody else connecting to the system. Therefore, we have a throttle back function which requests for a thousand user records at a time, and when we have processed these 1,000, we send a new request asking for the next 1,000 records. We might also include that each record can only be requested within a certain amount of time, for example, two or three seconds apart from each request. Our third-party data vendor has also made it possible to retrieve our data in a number of formats such as JSON, XML and flat files in the form of CSV or TXT. We decide to process the files in JSON format, which also provides us with the data types for each field of information. Lastly, we connect to our web server, which is running on Apache, and to capture web logs and transaction logs of our customers. These are stored in flat files on our web application and are easily read from our web server using secure FTP, SFTP. All three systems now have had their data loaded into a staging server and the next stage is to start transforming the data into meaningful information. For example, as noted that each of these systems are disparate, we need to generate global customer keys that can allow the data to be related to each other. Next, we need to process timestamps and corresponding time zone information to have all our data relate to one time zone or corresponding time zones of business hours. For example, if our servers are being hosted in California, with timestamps for Pacific Mean Time, but we want to query transactions that were processed in the United Kingdom with Greenwich Mean Time, then we need to cast our timestamps accordingly. If we didn't cast our timestamps to the correct time zone, then we would have to manually calculate each transaction's time zone and timestamp, which can be very costly. As an example, if we ran a campaign in the UK over the weekend and wanted to check hourly performance to see when the campaign was at its peak, if the timestamp date is in PST time zone, then we are seven hours off from Greenwich Mean Time. A transaction that took place at 1 p.m. in the UK would be recorded on our server as 7 a.m. PST. Other transformations we are likely to consider are currency and foreign exchange. Our system is recording data in all currencies from around the world, but for reporting purposes we need to process an overall report in US dollars, but also corresponding reports in local currency. While it is possible to make the conversions at the time of our analysis, our DBAs have taken the time to set up corresponding fact tables with relevant currencies of conversions such as Euro, Sterling, Japanese Yen and Chinese Yuan. Once we have completed all transformations of our data, the next step will be to start loading this data into our data warehouse tables. Depending on the needs of your business will depend on how often you run your batch ETL jobs. And at any given time, you may have a number of concurrent parallel jobs running on your system. Especially when it comes to transforming data, as noted, we may have a number of different aggregate tables which need processing, such as on a daily, weekly and monthly basis. Oftentimes, you will find where end-of-month processing starts to run at the beginning of the next new month. This may impact the first few days of a daily and weekly batch processing, where our monthly transformations are having to look back on average of 30 days worth of data, and these jobs may take more than 24 or 48 hours to fully process, especially if you are running a large global company with millions of transactions on a daily basis. This is where we need to identify a balance with our database processing and our business needs. You will also find that where ETL is processing jobs with source data being brought into our company's data warehouse, oftentimes each department will also have their own set of batch jobs, which is processing data for their own local reports. And these in turn will get held up if you have a dependency on a source system job running and also you may have dependencies on other teams' batch jobs processing. Finally, we discussed about aggregate tables in our previous section. Such tables typically come about where database administrators will monitor 
frequently asked queries by data analysts within the data warehouse. And based on these queries, they can then formulate new aggregate tables to facilitate such data analysis, which will reduce the processing load on the data warehouse, where such expensive queries only need be processed once by the ETL batch. And results can then be utilized by the business and analyst teams alike. As a business analyst, you will find yourself most of the time working with aggregate tables if you are building out dashboards and reports for the business to illustrate key performance metrics and will typically only revert back to using fact tables if the business has identified an issue with a core KPI on a given day or for a given campaign. For example, if the business noted a large spike in transactions midweek and cannot identify what has caused the spike, then we need to go back to a more granular level such as at the fact table level to try and identify the cause for the spike, which might be anything from a once-off large transaction from a single customer to an anomaly in payments such as large refund or chargeback being processed. To summarize, Batch ETL can be set up to run core SQL jobs for extraction, transformation and loading of data for desired business intervals such as daily, weekly and monthly. Extraction of data can vary from source system to source system and the tools used for extracting the data. Transformation of data such as dates between time zone, multiple currencies and creating global customer IDs between disparate systems help a business to consolidate their data sources into a single data warehouse. Having a single data warehouse ensures tight security and ease of administration for a database administration team. While there is an overall batch maintained by database administration teams, it is also likely that many other departments will have their own ETL batch jobs which the team business analyst will maintain. Delays in loading batch data should be communicated amongst teams and can take time to resolve if there are dependencies on data from other teams or systems. Maintaining large batch systems can be quite the juggling job as a failure in one batch can impact many areas, not too dissimilar to roadworks. If the issue is local, then only a few users may be impacted, whereas if the failure is at a source system, this can be the equivalent of having a section of motorway closed, which will impact many users and can delay projects. That's all for this section on ETL.